was the time that we've all been waiting for, getting to the end of our derivation, the full free energy expression for Bragg-Williams. So we've previously shown, let me go up on this side here. So we've figured out and we've demonstrated, we found our delta S of mixing, uh, which is one page up. So we found our delta S of mixing, uh, the molar delta S mixing by this expression right here. You could rewrite it. We saw uh, that that mixing always pushes towards, or entropy of mixing always pushes towards the mixed state. We saw that for our uh, enthalpic contribution here, we introduced this critical chi parameter, how to calculate using the Hillebrand uh, expression. Uh, we will, the delta H of mixing will often, when chi is greater than zero, push towards an unmixed state. And again, it's going to be depend on this, uh, con this contest, right? Does the increase in trans, um, translational entropy, does that uh, give me a lower energy than paying that energy penalty for these unfavorable enthalpic contributions? So that's what we're going to see some interesting states occur. Because um, again, that entropy, as we saw, varies depending on your, uh, basically the volume fraction of your materials, your polymers or your solvents or your molecules or your gases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we will see and develop a phase diagram where the materials will either be mixed or demixed. Uh, so that's what we're going to kind of uh, do here. If your chi is negative, then everything, as you're going to see here, is going to be uh, fine and you're always mixed. So let's kind of see if that's the case. So my delta G of mixing, my molar delta G of mixing now, will be the following expression. So I'm going to divide out everything by n naught, as you can, as you will see here. So if I do that, then my delta A G of mixing will just be this here, and then that's it. You just add this together. So let's look at this expression here. So I really like to kind of deal with this. We could again use this relationship. Let's rewrite it in terms of phi two. So. I'm going to write it phi2, remember, is equal to, uh, or phi1, excuse me. Um, I want to replace that phi1 is equivalent to equal to 1 minus phi2, because phi1 plus phi2 is 1. They have to, we, we have to have uh, basically one volume fraction. Everything has to be filled on our site. So let's go ahead and look and plot, in fact, our free energy curve here. So I'm going to use this replacement and then plot everything as a function of V2. So let's look at our delta. So in our Mathematica notebook, I have created, uh, this is my Bragg-Williams entropy S, Bragg-Williams mixing, uh, enthalpy of mixing, H here. So my Bragg-Williams gives free energy of mixing is this. And now I could take this function and plot it uh, and manipulate plot it here. So let me do that. Shift enter. I want. Oh, this guy's on the side here. It's a little annoying. But anyways, so let's look at. I could plot this as a function of temperature and as a function of chi. So look at this curve. So when chi is zero, my free energy is always negative. And actually, if I decrease it, it just gets. Actually, let me. Uh, I'm going to add a plot range. I'm going to do all here. So if I make my chi negative, you see it just gets lower and lower and lower and lower. You see the values here are changing on the y-axis. But it keeps getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. So, but something kind of interesting happens. And you'll see it's always symmetric. So this curve, dye free energy is always symmetric. So let me just do like a value of minus five. Oops, that's a minus minus. That does not like that. <laughs> so I could do minus five, I could do minus two. Again, the values are changing. I could do, how about I could do zero. Still, again, this curve is all, all, always negative. So even at chi parameter zero, I'm always concave up and I'm negative here. But I start to kind of flatten here, right? About 1.8. So I start to flatten and then at some value, Let's look at two. This curve really starts to flatten. And if I go above two, let's go to three. Oops. Excuse me. Let's get rid of that uh, plot range here. Maybe increase temperature. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do plot range all here as well. I'm just going to do plot range all, all together. So if I increase, excuse me. 
So if I increase my chi, you'll see here, let's go ahead and look at the values. So as I increase chi, again, as I get to two, I start to get a little flat. If I go to 2.5, I get this change in concavity here. So we are gonna come back to this in a second, but again, we're fully symmetric, but we have these inflection points here. These inflection points, if you remember back from uh, ENGR 45, material science, these inflection points uh, indicate areas of instability. And you'll notice here that at different concentrations, because again, we're plotting basically your volume fractions here. Your volume fraction is related to kind of the concentration of your um, molecules or polymers or whatever you're, you're interested in studying. But there's a common tangent point between here and here. What happens when we have a common tangent on a free energy curve for phase diagrams? We are going to have basically a phase separated state where below here, uh, we are going to uh, basically mix. And here in between, we are going to have some phase separated uh, region potentially. Uh, so we are going to uh, get into that and talk about that in great detail uh, moving forward. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that next time. And but yeah, you can just kind of see and play around with this curve. So we're flat, everything's happy, everyone's mixing. But once we hit that point, thing, you know, unfortunate things start to happen. So three, you're just completely flat. Um, let's do 10. You know, you could get uh, basically zero, almost zero, zero. So 2.5 is a nice 2.7. And you can see that basically these positions widen. So, so let's look at 2.8. We're flat there. So 2.7. So you can see where these locations occur compared to 2.2. So see, we're starting to get the phase separated region starting to grow more and more and more, which makes sense. In between here, we're phase separated. As we increase chi, they really don't want to be next to one another. So we want those interactions to be less and less and less and less and less. Yeah, so we'll talk about that next time. And yeah, have a good, uh, that is our flurry free energy. And next time we're going to adapt everything for polymers. So we'll see you all next time. Uh, and yeah, have a good one. Bye.